As you may or may not know, we here, The Late Show, were off the air for two weeks for the holidays. And of course, the biggest story over the break was Donald Trump. Actually, no, wait, I have to apologize. I'm looking at the card here, and it says that the biggest story was Steve Harvey announcing the wrong winner of the Miss Universe pageant. Sorry, Donald Trump was a very close runner up, but you can understand my confusion. They both seem like horrible mistakes. And Trump does seem unstoppable. The most recent CNN ORC BLT poll has Trump up nationally by 21 points. The American people want their next president to be a fire haired, red faced embodiment of pure rage, and anger from inside out isn't running. <laughs> the other Republican candidates will do, hey guys, anything, <laughs> anything to pull ahead. And with the Iowa caucuses just a few weeks away, things are gonna get ugly. And for people who cover it, that is beautiful. The race for the White House heating up. It's gonna get ugly. How ugly is this gonna get? Get ready. This is about to get very nasty. It's expected to be a nasty general election. New vulgar insults that show the race for president is getting nasty. Oh, it's gonna get stanky. <laughs> the candidates... <laughs> the candidates will be tossed into a fight pit and the cannibal media will stand on the precipice, placing wagers on which candidate will emerge from the pit drinking wine from the skull of their vanquished foe. It's like the Hunger Games. No, it's more brutal than that. It's the Hungry for Power Games. Ah, yes, welcome. Welcome, citizens, one and all. <laughs> to the Hungry for Power Games. Tributes, assemble. Oh, yes. Mm, this one smells like fear. Look at those shining, hopeful faces, each of them eager to take on the toughest job in the world. Decorating the Oval Office. The room has no corners. It's a feng shui nightmare. <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> now, sadly, sadly, citizens, only one person can be president. Even more sadly, it will be one of these people. <laughs> Lowered expectations. Mm. Over the holidays, America got the greatest gift of all. Slightly fewer candidates. Former Governor George Pataki is out of the race for president. Senator Lindsey Graham has ended his presidential bid. Yes, two more tributes have fallen. Longtime Senator Lindsey Graham and three term New York Governor George Pataki. They were both brought low by a shameful chapter in their past government experience. <laughs> oh, you did stuff, and that's just not done. Bye bye. <laughs> And things started so brightly for South Carolina Senator and Cabbage Patch Republican Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Out of all 17 Republican candidates, only Graham had military experience, having spent over 30 years as an Air Force Judge Advocate General, or JAG. It looked for a while that things were on for the JAG, but now it's JAG off. <laughs> <laughs> Wordplay, can't bleep me. Ah. <laughs> now, from day one, Brave Lindsay was focused on national security. He even had a plan to stop ISIS, triple our troop presence in Iraq, and send 10,000 American soldiers to Syria alongside a coalition of Arab allies to prevent the entrenchment of a caliphate. Or to put that in a more popular way, I would bomb the <laughs> out of him. Yay, sugar daddy is going to buy baby a bomb. I love you so. <laughs> now, little Graham Cracker was struggling. But he wasn't knocked out until he said this about President Obama. I have no doubt that he loves his country. I have no doubt that he's a patriot. Oh, no. Lindsay and Barack sitting in a tree. K-I-L-L-I-N-G. His chances of ever being the nominee. <laughs> and just like that, he's gone. So Tribute Graham has been dragged down by the albatross of his own qualifications. And it's no surprise. It would be hard to imagine anybody polling less than one half of one percent. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have to imagine because George Pataki was polling at 0.0 percent. <laughs> Which technically means George Pataki wasn't even voting for George Pataki. <laughs> Can you blame him? The guy's polling at 0 percent. <laughs> now, before the power games began, Governor Pataki was out of the public eye for 10 years. But even when the public eye was back on him, it had no idea what it was looking at. 
because when Jeopardy contestants were shown his picture earlier this year, none of them could supply his name. <laughs> and yet, voters kept saying the correct answer, who is George Pataki? <laughs> That's him, right? That's him, right? But if he thought he was ever going to be president, George Pataki was smoking the wacky Pataki. <laughs> because he ran as a Republican who supports abortion rights, gun control, gay rights, and environmentalism. Shh, children, no sudden movements. It's the last Republican moderate. If you listen closely, you can hear his haunting mating call. Let's compromise, let's compromise. <laughs> alas, alas. His pelt will now make a fine rug for Donald Trump's trophy room. <laughs> sadly for these tributes, it's time to bid farewell. And even sadly for me, because this is part of the show I'm allowed to drink champagne in. <laughs> I have a problem. Now, let's pay tribute to the fallen. Tributes. We hardly knew ye, which was more than the voters wanted. <laughs> oh.